How's it going everyone? Zeke here and welcome to Zombicide Tutorial Part 2. In this tutorial we'll be talking about the whole UI, your character, and your village here. My village is of Narsa. It seems to be randomly generated if you're curious. Alright, so first off, hitting the Alt key will show everything on the map. Or not show everything on the map, but <laughs> your screen. Right now it's set to off, you can see by here. Hit it again, everything shows up. This includes items that are dropped. So, in big battles, it's probably best to turn this off until wait till everything's dead, then turn this back on. Alright, it'll even show, like, destroyable barrels and stuff like that. So, before we get to what's currently on the screen, let's talk about our little UI bar down here. See this right here? This is a teleport stone. You get one per world. Now, remember, each world has a win and loss condition. This isn't like Diablo, where you continuously... Uh, start a character and you go through a storyline until you end and then you just start higher difficulty. No, no, no. This one, each map is its own mm, adventure would be the best way to describe it. Can't really see anything right now, but as I venture out, it just has a limited number of factions based on the world size and how many factions I put in plus enemies and whatnot. If I lose, I can just rebuild another map. If I win by killing everyone or solving enough quests, all this stuff, we'll get to that a little later, uh, the map's over and I can just start again. Or if I'm not liking how things are going, I can always just say, I want a new map. Just screw what's going on here. I want a new map. There are some penalties to that, and we'll get to that in another episode. So, this, this bar right here, is your experience. I'm currently level 1, so I have no experience. Obviously, this is my skill palette. I have 10 skills here. Over here is another skill palette. But I... Well, it's more than just skills. You can put items in there. Um, except this one is what happens when I right-click. What's down here, highlighted in yellow... Well, down in this big slot here is what's going to happen when I right-click. And you can control that with the, the mouse scroll wheel. Also, just FYI, you can zoom in and out with the page up, page down. Page down seems to zoom in, page up zooms out. Alright, next bar would be this one right here, the zombie threat. Now, certain creatures out in there, I think mostly have to be zombies. I don't know if it works on anything else. Maybe your nemesis as well. Um, but they'll form a group generally have one strong one. He takes the part of like a leader or a general, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you'll get a mission to go take him out, but it also states that he's pulling together a group to attack you. Now, every so often there will be raids against you and whatnot, but if this one fills, I'm pr I haven't had this happen yet. I can't find any information online at the time of this recording, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a massive attack. So... I don't know a way to reduce it, but definitely killing anyone who, any zombie threat like that is a way to stop it. Now, I just started the game, so we don't have to worry about that just yet. Right here is inventory. Now, inventory, probably best to think of this like World of Warcraft. I don't need my equipment thing. Uh, I'll screw it. I'll just bring it all up. Uh, basically, it's bag-based. Ah, as we see here on my inventory. I have the starter bag, which I don't think I can move, and I can have up to three more bags here. You know, you start with four size and get to six, eight, and I think the max is 16. Uh, you could get something bigger, but you have a total of three extra slots for them. So, they can get pretty big. Now, if you have anything in the bag, like this extra one here, if I had a small bag, if I even had a single item in it, I could not move this out of this slot. So, there's no... Throwing all items in a bag and then moving it into another bag. You, you can't do that. So just keep that in mind. Alrighty, next is how many coins I have. CP is copper. SP is silver. GP is gold. As you can see, 100 copper is 1 silver. 100 silver is 1 gold. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yes, you use it to buy things, but more often than not, you're going to use it to respect. It takes money to respect your skills. Uh, in the beginning... It's going to be a little harder, but you quickly end up getting a bit more. Like, 
around 10, I was able to respec two, three skills for one of my characters. So it, it's not too hard. Obviously down here, we have like our character screen and even tells you the shortcut. So C for character, uh, R for your relations and your diplomacy. We'll get into that a little later. Uh, clan information. This tells me who I've got and where they are. Well, if I hit the NPC locations, it'll tell me where they are. We'll get all this later in this video. Here is the quest screen. You can hit Q. Now, these are just the quests that you've tagged. Um, you, do, you don't have to have them in your quest log here to actually complete them. You can literally do complete quests for meeting someone else before you actually meet them. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, skill screen. Uh, I'm using the same character from last time, so I only have two. Uh, I do have a third one here. Everybody has a trait. But this this one right here, this is blank. Well, this would be here if you had one of the base characters. They have three skill trees. But since I made a hybrid, I have the fire mage and the healer that I selected, but I'm not allowed a third one. But everyone is allowed these traits. Uh, then we got the journal screen, which I never really use. <laughs> uh, is this character's name Adler? I don't even remember. I randomized it. Yep. That's Adler. Uh, general stuff, global basic. Yeah, your character. What is this global basic? Oh, this is all my characters. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Is it based off the highest? I'm assuming it's based off the highest. And Zeke and Ez are both my highest ones. That's pretty cool. Global. <laughs> Sorry, this is actually pretty interesting. I've never actually looked at it. All right, moving right along. Then we have the bestiary screen. Uh, every time you start a new character, this resets. But every time you meet something, they come here and you can learn minor things about them. Uh, mini map that just toggles the map up in the top right corner. You can do that with tab key. Map screen. Yeah, M. Very good map. You can drag it around with a left mouse click. Right just sets points. It's like, how many you can set? <laughs> you can set quite a few. Uh, in game menu, just hit escape. Return. And then, this is the help screen. Wow, this is actually quite nice. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you had a multiplayer, this is where it would chat. Or, any special events always go here. Full help topics, I can go right, right there and do all that. But we're not even going to worry about that. Oh, let's pause again. P is pause, just FYI. Now up here, you have me, uh, my name and my level, my health, my mana, and my stamina. Now, stamina, I don't think it actually you use it to use abilities, but if you're in combat, or even if you're running away from combat and whatnot, every time you move to run, you'll drain your stamina. So, 116 actually goes really, really quick. If you want this is uh, full stamina, I believe this you really only get this outside of combat because inside you drain it, but you move a little faster. It's always quite nice. Uh, Minimap has, obviously, has all kinds of stuff. Narsa Gate, okay. Hmm. Can't zoom in and out, doesn't seem like it. Uh, down here, I actually have it set. This is the time, and that's AM, if you're curious. <laughs> Alright, so let's get into the character screen. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention that down here. Food supply. Sorry about that. Um, basically, what this is, it tells me how much food I have. If I get below 24 food, it'll ration, which we'll get into that in a second. Uh, food uses per hour is 32, and food uses per meal is 100%, meaning um, if it's at 100%, that means it takes... Oh, how did, how did, how did I explain, explain this? Um, basically, no one here is good at, fruit, at food prepping. They're not combining it to make a larger meal. They're just eating finger food, I don't know. <laughs> like throwing a steak on a fire, just eating a steak, and that's it. Uh, no stews, no nothing to combine it. it. So they use everything. Or they use more, I guess you could say. 
if that's if you got anybody with any food prep it'll reduce that but generally you won't notice it as much unless you have a lot of people who have that all right character screen again your health and mana here food supply uh what you are money and then all your stats here armor Armor is damage absorption. Attack is your chance to hit. Defense is your chance to dodge. Obviously your damage and your DPS. And then all your resistance is here. I have no magic resistance. Uh, as you can tell, I have a magic resistance. I have a poison resistance of 2, which absorbs 11.1%. But my zombie is a little higher and it has 23.8%. Has 3 points more skills, but is only slightly more than double. Uh, diminishing returns and we'll get into zombie resistance because that's pretty important now if you're curious about the combat stats this is just i'm used to using the scroll wheel and it's not working here <laughs> this is just a breakdown of some extra stats you have uh i do need to talk about ah critical hit and crushing blow critical hit basically you do double damage obvious I don't think there is an increased crit damage at all in here. But Crushing Blow, basically that means this is your chance to roll something to automatically make you do maximum weapon damage. And these two can strike at the same time, but you usually don't see it. It only puts up maybe the critical, but a crushing critical hit, you will do the maximum damage your weapon can do, and then times two. <laughs> Very good to hit take very good when it happens now you may see items that or abilities that say increase critical hit by 10% that's not making that's not saying that my critical hit will go to 16.6% .6 instead it's adding it takes 6.6 .6 .6 .6 10% and then adds that percentage that next number to this so what is 10% of 6 i Let's just say my critical hit was 10%, and I get 10% of 10%. That would be like uh, 11%, so you get the idea there. And it's the same for crushing blows. I think it's the same for a lot of the stuff here. Um, it's just increasing the value that's already here, not adding on to it. <laughs> Skills. Like I said, these are your... Traits or proficiencies, your skills. There's not too much point uh, things here, but... As you can see, this is my money. How many points I have left? Let's go ahead and get that. Now, right here it says, cost to decrease. I'll decrease this thing, I think, by one or maybe all of them. I'm not 100%. I will regain one skill point, and it'll take one silver and 27 copper. So it's just as simple as that for the respec. Uh, traits. Like I said, every character has traits. But... And you can say 5, 10, 15, 20, and how much they cost. But you need more than that. Like this one. You need a base spirit of 50. This one of intelligence, vitality, dexterity, and strength. All of them 50. Then the next level is 100. And then 150. And then 200. Now, all of these will have uh, positive and negative. So make sure you're, you're grabbing the ones you want. And you're well aware of what they do. And when I say by base, I'm talking the white version. The uh, base amount, not the current amount. So if I get a weapon that adds plus 10 strength, I will have a strength of 15. But the base is still 5. That's exactly what that means. Uh, this is just saying, hey, I got a personal lifestone. I can resurrect. Only you have this. Your people do not. All right, what was next? Relations we'll talk about later. Uh, inventory. Uh, keep in mind that not every character, especially ones that you create yourself, can use all these stuff here. Like, not everybody can use a cape. Uh, maybe some people can't even use shoulders. But generally, everyone can use jewelry and whatnot. Plus, shields are another ones that they either they can or cannot use. The rest is just a... Everyone can wear wristbands, but not everyone can wear, say, plate mail. So you can have cloth, leather, mail, 
all the way up to whatever's below plate mail. So real simple is that. Next one. Do, 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 do. All right, might as well talk about the clan info screen. This is also, you can hit in to do. Now, this tells me the names of my people, and if they have a status effect like this guy, this poor sucker is petrified. Now, this does have some negatives, and we'll get to those in a minute. This tells me their level, their class, but not their skills. Uh, actually, yes, it does tell me their skills, and some of their hates. Hates horrors. Uh, their happiness, their insanity, dear God. God, these guys are half insane. <laughs> uh, their focus, which is something else, which I'll have to get to. Uh, I'll have to sh go to the characters to actually see it. And then their skills. And if you hover above skills, it'll tell you what they mean. So C means they have crafting skills, and O means they have something completely different. Uh, we'll have to go to them to see what it is. But combat skills, obviously they're going to be better in combat. Hunting skills, uh, hunting, foraging... Yes, just hunting and foraging. Capture skill. What the hell is that? That's new. <laughs> uh, but foraging and hunting. These are for expeditions. Hunting party. If they have a hunting skill, they're going to bring in more food. Uh, expeditions. They're going to bring in more uh, health potions and possibly stuff for repairing and all that stuff. Uh, adventuring, I do not know 100% what this does, but I'm assuming they just go out and level up, kill everything. Possibly even reduce what's in the, the zone that you... That, bleh, what's in the zone that you send them to. If you actually go to the zone, they will be running around killing things. Now, these two are just added. I don't remember when, because I rarely use all this stuff. Mostly because my people are so freaking insane, I want them to drop it. Which I'm not having any luck on. <laughs> Uh, guard capture. You can have guards. You can have two guards per your gate. You have four gates. This will send them out to capture guards, and, well, you're basically enslaving them, so... <laughs> Slave guards. Very important, uh, and I'm definitely going to start using this more often, uh, because when you're assaulted, you're going to need as many guards as possible. And this one is scavenge items. Let's see. Send NPCs out to scavenge for items in an area. Low rarity items will be distributed to NPCs or salvaged. Set items or better will be given to the player. Note, the more damage scavengers take, the sooner they will come back home. Well, this is interesting. So not only will they get items and they will increase their own... Um, uh, well, they'll get better armored and armed themselves. Uh, you can have a chance to get something really nice and... You're going to get more salvage for your stuff if it comes back crap. I'm assuming if it comes back and no one needs it, not even you, or if it's something big enough, they'll give it to you anyway, whether you need it or not. Um, this will tell you the basics of your uh, clan, town name, your arch nemesis. I currently don't have one. Arch nemesis. Basically, they're going to be after you no matter where you are. Nemesis, generally, they'll only give you trouble in a certain region. Uh, this tells you how many followers. Zero out of clan area. Oh, yes. This is if you take them with you or if they you send them adventuring with someone else. Your food supply and the average happiness. Uh, happiness is low. We're going to do something about that. Uh, advanced clan stats, just some extra stuff. Uh, this is actually diplomacy stuff, so we're not even going to worry about that just yet. Zombie knowledge. This is... You'll find this stuff as you go along, whether it happens to you or you find them in notepads. I don't want to state, if you do become infected, health potions give a chance to cure. The better the health potion, the better it does. Uh, zombie potions also have a very high chance to cure, but if it doesn't work, you can be poisoned. Uh, do 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 I don't know about those... Uh, there are two types of zombie infections. I think that's what this is. No, it's infection stage one. Where does it talk about? Oh, that's the carrier. Oh, this is just normal infection. Normal infection. Um, level one and normal infection and carrier infection do virtually the same thing, but their level two is what's different. All level two's uh, infected stages cannot harm zombies. They can't even attack them, but the zombies will also not attack them. You still have control of your character, but you are very limited. 
note this is only on you. Uh, at infection stage two, you will constantly take damage and you do get debuffs. Uh, carrier stage, you do get debuffs, but instead of taking damage, you will spawn uh, the zombie parasites. Thus, Zombicite, the name of the game. Uh, and these will go out and infect random stuff. Not to mention they can attack. I think they're really weak and I'm not sure how their infection works. But definitely something you need to cure. Also, if you have a heal spell, like you're a healer, you have a chance to uh, cure it. But I do not know how much. According to this. Some skills that heal all at once have a chance to cure infections. All at once. I wonder if that means just a heavy heal, or if it heals you for more HP than you have. I don't know. What is this? Oh, yes. How um, zombie resistance works, it just reduces all resistance. It just reduces the damage you take. Now, for the zombie... Uh, the zombie damage... The more uh, the damage they the more damage they are capable of doing to you, the higher your chance of being infected. So the higher your zombie resistance, the reduced chance you have of being infected. The Death Knight actually has a skill that does reduce. Uh, I believe it reduces or gives you resistance to everything, but really gives you resistance to Zombicide. Um, death Knight, after all, they control death. <laughs> Um, zomb the zombies can mutate and they become stronger and stronger in their area. Uh, they can infect other NPC creatures and they do become stronger. All zombies are stronger than their base part. Uh, if they infect an NPC, whether you're one of your guys or one of the other members of blah, 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 blah faction is out adventuring. If they do manage to get it to stage two and then the they die at stage two, they will turn into a very powerful zombie, and an incredibly powerful zombie. All guards, however, are immune to this. No, wait, maybe not all guards, but some monsters are immune. But a lot of the guards are immune themselves. Uh, da, da, da. That's all that. And I, I still have five more left to find, and they do add more. So they'll definitely add some more. Oh, also, bit of the history, the backstory. Show NPC. Da, da, da. I don't know what that does. You can gift. This will increase their happiness, possibly even their reduce their insanity. You don't want to get them up to hundred. Now here's something interesting. Now you got the locations of the NPCs. You got one here, which I can right click on. I can right click on again. I can set the focus. I can learn a bit about them. This is the petrified one, I believe. Happiness. Unnatural happiness because it's or natural hap unhappiness loss. Natural happiness loss because it's the apocalypse, but because they have full ration and they're sheltered, which is in a house, um, they get a bone. They boost the happiness. They will constantly get happier. If I get more negatives on there, it does hurt a bit more. Insanity is supposedly re uh, reduced by full ration, but I've left some people in here for a long time and they <laughs> do not become more sane at all um morale is basically when they're when it drops they start to run more uh the personalities it'll actually tell you here hates whores unhappy when damaged by enemy happier when they kill enemy and target these enemies more hmm. sometimes i'll actually run and target them in less but the more you supposedly the how it goes on the steam forms and a few other forms if they hate something or they're terrified of something, fight it. Okay, hate and terrify are two different things. If they're terrified of something, fight it more, and it tends to get rid of the, I guess you could say, that part of their personality. Deranged. Happiness and any relations with others is erratic. Ooh. Yeah, some of them are complete assholes, and if they they have their own relations to people, others. Let me see if I can find it somewhere. Uh... Ah, relations right here. Uh, their relations and all that. They can drop, and if they drop low enough, they will fight each other. Particularly if one guy, most of the time, one guy will hate the other guy more, and the other guy may not care. But the first one will just start fighting and fighting and fighting. And there are ways you can stop this. You can right-click them, and then send them to any one of these blue dots. Like, say, right, way out here. So he's on guard duty. 
and completely away from, let's say, he hated this guy and he's been fighting him. Now they're completely way off. And I can move a little farther there. Actually, probably a good idea to put him in shelter. Uh, the green dot represents shelter. Uh, these houses can burn, but you can also get quests to rebuild them. So now these guys are far apart. The chances of them fighting are very, very low, which is indeed a good thing. Come here, you. All right. This tells you what skills they have. Uh, well, I guess this would be more... Uh, what did I call those things? <laughs> Proficiencies, that's it. So they can use male armor, they can wear capes, they like axes, and can hold shields. It is a death knight. So, decent tank. I love this ability, Hellstorm. It's a nice little uh, targeted area uh, AoE damage. This one's blacksmithing, so decreases the cost to repair and en enhance weapons, mail, armor, and plate armor for the entire clan. Also creates mail or ugh, also creates mail or plate armor, shields, and weapons occasionally. So they'll make them and they'll hand them to you. Sometimes they'll even give you missions to uh, go get more ingredients so they can do this. Unholy armor. Oh, that's nice. Uh, powerful armor buff that can be turned on and off. While active, it decreases your maximum mana. What do you get for it? 20% armor and plus one for passive. <laughs> uh, gives you guard against critical hits. So that's actually a nice little piece of armor. Uh, wow, it has extra spirit. I wonder if that's a permanent thing. If you're wondering whether that's a plus cause, or an X, the X means I can't use it. The plus means it's better than what I currently have, which at the moment is nothing, so I can't steal from him. If you drop an item here, and it's called the Clan Armory, uh, you can do it from the character screen itself or the message board, which we'll get to next. And it'll just distribute any item you have to anybody who either needs it or wants it. If no one wants it, it just goes straight back to your inventory. Now, I can recruit to party, kick out of the clan, change the relations, donate some stuff, or give them extra rations. Giving them extra rations is a sudden, hey, here's some bonus food, keep it. It just makes them like you. Uh, donate does the same thing. Uh, supposedly, you're capable of making one gift to another. I don't know how that works, <laughs> personally. Uh, focus basically just changes their stance. Normal, normally. Uh, work, they do... For whatever work they have, I'm guessing for if you send them out on an expedition or if they have building, crafting, um, or extra food stuff. Uh... It increases food use. I don't know, but it in doubles the work bonuses, but increases food uses and decreases happiness. Gar, they will patrol more often for intruders, increases attack and defense by 50%, uh, so they hit better and dodge better. Uh, increases food uses, but increases insanity and decreases happiness, so use when they're low and you really need uh, patrols. Construction route uh, works on rebuilding houses. This is a new one added. No longer does normal work except carpentry. Uh, increases food uses and decreases happiness. And R and R, they do less work, but they improve happiness and reduce sanity. I usually keep them on this, and I can switch between them here. And both of them are women. Weird. Hmm. Alrighty. You have days. Nice little stun. Jeweler decrease the cost to enhance jewelry for the entire clan, and makes jewelry. Nice. They can wear leather and cloth. I feel like I got screwed on that deal. Only needed one armor type. Uh, use swords and daggers. Has a death blow and can wear capes. Alright. Happiness. Which one's petrified? Yeah, this one. Uh, they don't lose insanity. Er, they don't gain insanity, but they do lose happiness while they're petrified. But since I have him on a plus three, he will slowly gain uh, happiness. So that's that. Escape to get back to this menu. I don't know if you're curious about this. Uh, expeditions, you see, four out of 75. Uh, this increases. You can send clan members out on three types of expeditions. They need to fix that. <laughs> Uh, your clan will only put up with so many expositions into the dangerous wilds outside of the town walls. Each exposition uses up 50 exposition points. 
your expedition points will slowly go up when there are no expeditions out. Note, your points can go below zero, but the further your expedition points drops below zero, the more unhappy all of your clan members will get. So at the beginning, you can't do any of this. Well, you can, but they're going to hate you. Um, obviously, the max is 75, and it uses up 50, and that's when it comes down to you really only do want to do one per hour and just let it regenerate. Uh, I have no idea how much I get ever so often, but yeah. All right, so win progress. There's a military win. Current number of known clans left. I haven't met anybody, so I don't know. And I have other clans. Uh, I, I haven't met. There are still clans alive that I haven't met yet. Basically, what a military win is, you have to be the last clan surviving. In some of the other games of uh, Soldak, this was the easiest one to get. Uh, we're going to hold off on Diplomatic Win for now. Uh, Adventure Win. This is actually something new, I believe, because I don't ever remember this, but then again, I don't check the screen that often. Uh, I have to complete 120 quests, and I will complete this. Logistics Win. I have to have 240 food uh, maximum, and I win by this. Uh, I don't know. I haven't actually fully won something yet. I either get completely destroyed or just hop off into something new. But in some of the older games, you do get chests that pop out of varying sizes depending on what type of win you did. The harder it is, the bigger it was. They give you a lot of random stuff. So I'm hoping it still does this here. It just doesn't say it. Now, a diplomatic win. First off, you have to be allied to everyone that's left alive. And then all the ones left alive have to be allied with each other. This one's a rather hard one to do. Or it can be rather easy. You can have only a single ally. You're both allied to each other and you just wipe out everyone. So it can be easy or hard depending on how you want to do it. Uh, lose progress. Generally, if all of your followers die or your health stone is destroyed, you're done. But apparently there is bounty hunters in this game, which I don't know how those work. But your health stone is this over here. As you level up, it gets stronger. You can also heal off your health stone if you're low. Just unpause it, click it, and you go over here and heal. And pause again. Apparently, I can still heal off of it, even though I don't need it. Regenerate six health per second. Healing amount modified by health stone's health. Oh, that's something new. All right. So now let's get to the bounty board. Now, here are the. Uh, the two quests I can do. If you're wondering what the P stands for, P stands for priority. Three is important. Two is very important. I've seen them as low as five and obviously as high as one. So, food supply has been poisoned. Ooh. So that's not a good one. And this is go kill some jackass who's who doesn't like me. Basically, if I don't kill him, he'll pillage. Oddly enough, I do not have a quest to help my petrified guy. Now, you can go to your diplomacy screen, or what do they call this? Clan information screen. No, that ain't it. Relations. <laughs> uh, and you can click here. You can get quests here. You can also solve quests here, so you do not need to come back every time to do it. And like I said, I don't even have to have those quests set on my quest list. This is just something that should, that'll say active and it'll display over here. Will it? No, it won't display on my screen at all. I'm thinking of a different game. Sorry about that. Uh, it's just quick access. I can just hit Q and blah, 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 blah. There they are. Uh, uh, we'll talk about diplomacy in another video. Now... I want to talk about your stashes down here. We have a shared stash and a player stash. Shared stash, uh, every character that is not hardcore or one of the ones that block it has a shared stash. And that's why I can see what's in these things. So I got all these bags. Now, if you're wondering why there are bags in here, it's because you cannot set any item in here unless it's in a bag. So, we'll go back to here. Open this bag. Open my inventory. And I'll set something in it. And voila. It's now in the bag. You have to put bags in here. And then that opens up more inventory. So, you got one, two, three, four, eight total bags. And they can get up probably big 16. Maybe even a little higher. And hello. 
Oh, somebody wants my help. Now, you got to be careful, though. Sometimes they can be traps, but generally you always want to help because sometimes you can get, like, extra people. Now, the more people you have, the more food you will consume, so be careful with that. Uh, obviously, here is a gate. I don't actually have another gate, but, well, actually, yes, I do. I have that gate. You always seem to start with one out here. Uh, you can generally use it to skip in case there's something really terrible waiting on the other side here. All right, unpause. This is your, I guess you could say, crafting station. You're not really crafting. Uh, you'll salvage, salvage items. Uh, crud. But basically, it's weapon repair, armor repair, purification, uh, a few others that I haven't quite figured out. Uh, yes, you have durability, as you can see. Durability, 10 of 10. As I use this more often, uh, it's going to reduce in strength, or reduce in its durability, until it can eventually break. I think you can still use it, but it's like reduced or maybe you can't use it i don't quite remember i never had one last that long <laughs> but yeah repair them as often as you can well not as often as you can but i think the stronger the item that or the more durability you have to repair the more of the resources it's going to cost da -da -da. pedestals let's go over here all right so first off you can see the four doors here this one has 100 health, 100 health, 100 health, 100 health. These are the standard. Uh, you will find different doors. They will give different, varying amounts of health. And sometimes they will have uh, a special attribute like can repair or resistant to certain magic types. Um, unfortunately, you cannot repair them. I do not know if these resistances apply to the door itself, all the doors, or perhaps the people inside or the guards. I do not a hundred percent, but obviously you're gonna want the ones that give special attributes. Uh, these are guards, guard slots. You can have two at each door, so up to eight. Now here are relics or luxuries. Now these these are generally clan wide bonuses. That can be incense or dyes, which give happiness. Uh, some give you stat increase for your entire faction. They do have durability. They cannot be repaired, and it seems the fact that they sit here. They slowly lose their ability. And I have some in my shared stash here. I have some doors. Uh, da, da, da. It's a relic and luxury item. Uh, my minions get 16.1% extra armor. Obviously, that takes level 3. Huh. So that's that. You got four of them, but really, it, it represents the four. Uh, luxury item so if you set a luxury item on here it'll just immediately go to one but they're all linked to, to the one to the same thing you only ever need to uh, click one uh, like i said these are the houses they can stay in and they will burn if hit with fire obviously the door just click it and you can walk right out sometimes you can click it and it'll eventually shut on its own uh it seems you always have one entrance and one exit it always seems to be north or, really, northeast. Okay, now we can see here, one of my people does have a mission for me. And now, um, NPC missions, you cannot get them or turn them in at a message board or through the relation screen. You have to go find the NPC, get quest, what is this, deliver package to New Bold. I have no idea, but I'd accept it. I'd do it. Let's say it was a gather quest. I have to come back directly to him. What does he have on him? Root to party. Oh, he's the petrified one. What the hell do I have? Unless it's the quest. Unless that's the quest I need to do for him to be. I had the petrification removed. Okay, what am I forgetting? He? Oh, petrify and extra spray. There he was. Uh, if you're wondering how I got rid of that, you right click, not left click. Um, maybe escape will do the same thing. Uh, nope, you have to right click. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering about where vendors are, vendors, you find them out in the wilds. They are random and rare. I seem to have 
stumbled onto a few, but you can trade with other factions, and we'll get to that in another video. See, I know there's something I am forgetting. What am I forgetting? Think, 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 think. Oh, there's my fiery blast. I can move over here. Get rid of that. And now every time I right click, I'll shoot a fiery blast. <laughs> I am a fire healer. Kind of weird. <laughs> I am definitely forgetting something. I know that for a fact. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when you get attacked, there will, well, actually, all the times when you get attacked. No, I think I was actually attacked by a single creature one time, unless someone else took it out. Um, there almost will always be a portal, and it'll just keep spawning, keep spawning, keep spawning. So try to get rid of that portal as fast as you can. Uh, if they're spawning zombies, you're definitely going to want to kill those. Otherwise, you're going to get turned, or your people are going to get turned, and shit's going to hit the fan really, really fast. So never let yourself... Or never try to get surrounded by zombies. If you see that, you get back ASAP. Try, you definitely need to get one of these. If you absolutely have to, use the teleport stone. But generally, you don't want to do that unless they're in your base and they're almost on top of your health, your health stone, or you got one guy left over. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of one guy, and why are you so unhappy? Yeah, you can fight them and you can actually kill them. So be careful when you do that. Uh, completing quests will increase their happiness. Sometimes talking to them will also increase their happiness. Quickness. Wow. Are you the rogue? Yes. Make you dual wield if you can. I forgot. Is dual wielding in this game? <laughs> I completely forgot. Oh. Oh. Double doors. Yeah, even though it's a double door, it still counts as one solid door. Just FYI. I do believe that is it. Check all my screens. Spent a lot of time on this one. <laughs> and that's actually, what was that, four when we started? So that's going up at a decent pace when I'm not paused. Shows us all So blah, 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 blah. Ah, nice. So you can do that. Oh, yeah, talk about that. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I do believe that is it. All right, so this was... What was that? UI, you and your village. Let's tune in next time. I will be talking about diplomacy. Mm, a few tips and tricks about it, definitely. I'll need to brush up on, but I... If I have enough time, I will talk about possible death and reloading of characters. Till then, guys, have a good one.